This is Rebecca from chemistryismyjam.com. In this video, we're going to be talking about electron configuration. Each electron within an atom has its own location, and we need a method for indicating what that location is. Just like in this stadium that I have on the screen, each person has their own location. If I were trying to indicate to you the location of this person wearing pink, I would first indicate whether or not they were on the first or the second floor. Then I would indicate the section number, the row number, and finally the seat number. Each person in the stadium has their own set of numbers that help you find exactly where they are. The same is true for electrons. When we're locating electrons, we will go through four different levels. The first level is the energy level. The energy level is indicated by the row on the periodic table. So if an element is in the third row down on the periodic table, you should expect that there are electrons in the first three energy levels for that element. Within those energy levels are sublevels, and we'll take a look at these, but you're going to find that those sublevels are called S, P, D, and F. Within those sublevels are orbitals and the type of sublevel dictates the number of orbitals. For example, the S sublevel has one orbital while the P has three. Then within the orbitals, that's where the electrons are located and each one of those orbitals can hold up to two electrons. So I'm going to go through and spend a minute on each one of these different levels and then we'll look at how we can write electron configurations. First of all, the energy level. We saw these when we talked about Bohr models. You have different energy levels where electrons are located. The number of energy levels is indicated by the row down on the periodic table. The Bohr model for aluminum shows you that there are three energy levels for aluminum, and aluminum is located on the third row down on the periodic table. So your row down indicates the number of energy levels present. Within those energy levels, you have sublevels, and there are four different types of sublevel the S, the P, the D, and the F. These sublevels are where the orbitals are located, and those orbitals are where the electrons are located. So, sublevels hold orbitals, and orbitals hold electrons. So, for each sublevel, you should be aware of the shape of its orbitals, the number of its orbitals, and then the number of electrons that it can hold. The S sublevel has orbitals with a spherical shape. The P sublevel has orbitals with a barbell shape. We will look at the D and the F, but those have a shape that is a little more difficult to describe. The number of orbitals is important. The S sublevel has one orbital, the P has three, the D has five, and the F has seven. Each of those orbitals can hold up to two electrons, so the number of electrons is two times the number of orbitals. I want to make some relationships back to the periodic table. This periodic table is one that we'll be using throughout this video to try to understand electron configuration, and you can see that it has been color-coded. The periodic table is arranged in such a way to indicate where electrons are located. This portion right here represents the S sublevel, this portion represents the P, this portion represents the D, and then underneath would be the F. If you count the number of elements across, like for the F, there's 14 across, the F sublevel holds 14 electrons. That's not a coincidence. The P sublevel that block on the periodic table is six elements across, which can help you remember that the P sublevel holds six electrons. So that's a tool that we'll be using throughout the video. For now, I want to go back and finish discussing orbitals and electrons. This diagram shows you the different types of orbitals that are present within the sublevels. Starting at the top, you have the S sublevel. 
Recall that the S sublevel had one orbital and it had a spherical shape. So this one sphere is representing the S sublevel. The P sublevel had three orbitals. So you can see that for this yellow portion, there are three orbitals and it has a barbell shape. So these are little tiny barbells. Also notice that if you look at these on a three dimensional axis, one of them falls along the X axis, one along the Y and one along the Z. So it's very three dimensional. The D sublevel has five orbitals and we said that the shape was a little more difficult to describe, which you see here. And then the F sublevel has seven orbitals with also some difficult shapes. I do want to point out that the shapes remain very three dimensional and the shapes get more complicated as you go from S, P, D down to F. So once again, these are the orbitals that are located within the sublevels that are located within the energy levels. And these orbitals are the regions of space where you will find the electrons. The electrons are located within orbitals. Each orbital holds up to two electrons, but they must have opposite spins. And we indicate that with the arrows, one going up and one going down to indicate that one is going this direction while the other is spinning the opposite direction. So we have looked at energy levels, which contain sublevels, which contain orbitals, which contain electrons. So if we're trying to locate each electron within the atom, we do that with an electron configuration. The example in front of you is an electron configuration. It's always going to have a large number here that indicates the energy level, followed by a letter. This is always going to either be S, P, D, or F that indicates the sublevel. And then you'll have a superscript on that letter that indicates the number of electrons in that sublevel. So the electron that this particular electron configuration is referring to is located in the first energy level, in the S sublevel, and that sublevel is holding two electrons. Recall that the periodic table has been arranged in such a way to help us indicate electron configurations. So you have an S block, a P block, a D block, and an F block. And in this particular per periodic table, I have color coded those for you. One thing you should also be aware of, many periodic tables put helium right here, which makes sense because helium has similar properties to the noble gases. But for electron configurations, it makes more sense to put helium here because helium only has a 1s sublevel. So it's best to pretend that helium is here when you're doing your electron configurations. In this example, we are going to be writing the electron configuration for oxygen, which is located here on the periodic table. So we're going to be starting in the top left corner of the periodic table and going through each element until we get to oxygen and writing the electron configuration. I find that it's helpful to have a printed periodic table when you're doing this and to go ahead and number the rows on the periodic table because those are going to indicate your energy levels. We're doing the electron configuration for oxygen, so I'm going to indicate that by putting oxygen here. Then I'm going to be beginning in the top left of the periodic table with hydrogen, and I'm going to go through each element until I get to oxygen. So starting up here with hydrogen, hydrogen is in the first energy level, so I put a big one to indicate the first energy level. It's in the S block of the periodic table, this whole dark blue block here is considered the S block. So I'm going to put an S. The number of elements in that S block is the next thing that I want to count. So there's hydrogen and then there's helium. There were two elements in the one S block. So that two becomes a superscript here to indicate that there are two electrons in the one S sublevel for oxygen. That got me through hydrogen and helium elements one and two. So now I go to the next element, which is element three, lithium. So that is in the second energy level. It's in the S block, and that 
2s block holds two electrons, so I'll put a two here. That got me through element four, so next I start with element five, which is boron. I'm still in the second energy level, so I put a two, but now I'm over here in the P block, so I'm gonna put a P. Then I want to count across until I get to oxygen. So there's one, two, three, four elements across. I'm going to put a superscript four there. That tells me that the 2P sublevel for oxygen is holding four electrons. So this is the electron configuration for oxygen. As a reminder, the large numbers indicate the energy level, the letter indicates the sublevel, and then the superscript is telling you the number of electrons within that sublevel. Let's repeat this process for another element. This time we'll do sodium. Sodium is located here. I'm going to indicate that I'm talking about sodium. I'm going to go ahead and number my rows down. Okay, and then I'm going to start in the top left corner of the periodic table up here with hydrogen. That's in the first energy level. It's in the S block, which is this whole dark blue portion. That one S energy level is holding two electrons, so I'll put a two here. That got me through elements one and two, so then I'm going to go to element three. I'm now in the second energy level. I'm still in the S block, and there are two electrons in that S block. Then I go across to here. This is the portion I'm looking at next. I'm now in the second energy level, but I'm in the P block. I'm going to go all the way through it. There are six elements there indicating that there are six electrons in that 2P block. Then I go, that got me through element 10, so now I go to element 11. That's in the third energy level down. It's in the S block, and sodium is the first element in that block, so I'll put a 1 here to indicate that I'm going to stop there. There's only one electron in that 3S sublevel. You can see that this periodic table is very helpful because it's been color coded and it's been labeled. So I want to use these labels to show you one area where you have a change in the pattern. So I'm going in order through the elements on the periodic table. You have 1S, then there's 2S, come across to here you have 2p, 3s, 3p. So notice that everything here is on the same row. It has the same energy level number. You run into a change when you get down to the fourth row. Here you have the 4s, so you would expect this to be the 4d. However, in the d block, the energy level drops by one. So it goes 4s, 3d, here you're leaving the D block, so it goes back up to normal, 4P. 5S, 4D, 5P. So you can see that any time you're in this D block, the energy level has been reduced by one. For the electron configuration for bromine, you can see where this happens. You have 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S2, 3D10, it takes 10 to go all the way through the D block, and the energy level dropped down to a 3. Here we're coming out of the D block, you go to a 4P, and 5 electrons gets you to bromine. In terms of the F block, the F block will make sense when you realize that the F block actually fits into the table right here. So you have element 55, 56, 57, here's 58, all the way to 71, back up to 72 here, 87, 88, 89, down to 90 here. So the F block fits right here into the periodic table, right here um, between elements 57 and 72, and between 89 and 104. So this is the sixth row down on the periodic table and the seventh row down on the periodic table. You can now see that the F block drops by two. It went from 6S to 4F, and then from 7S to 5F. So the energy level drops by one in the D block and by two in the F block. 
So this all seems rather tedious. Surely there must be a shortcut, and there is. We call it the noble gas configuration. You can see it here for bromine. I've written out the long version of bromine, and then I've written it out in the shortcut method, the noble gas configuration. So what you do is you find bromine on the periodic table, recognize that these elements over here on the far right are your noble gases. You want to find the last noble gas that you pass before you get to bromine. So you're gonna go up and all the way to the right. You can see that for bromine, that would be argon. So argon goes right here in brackets, and then the rest of the electron configuration starts with the element after argon. Argon's number 18, start with number 19, and then write the electron configuration as normal. Let's look at another example. In this example, I'm going to write the electron configuration for silver, which is element number 47 on the periodic table. I need to start by indicating the noble gas in front of silver. So find silver, go up and all the way to the right, and you see krypton. So krypton goes in brackets. I'm going to be putting KR in brackets. By putting KR in brackets, you're letting your reader know that you're indicating everything in front of KR is already there. It would be tedious to write it out again. So now that I've put KR in brackets, I can start with the element after KR. So KR is number 36. I'm gonna start with element number 37. I do need to count my rows down on the periodic table. So I'm in the fifth row down. I'll put a five here. This portion is the S block and there are two elements in that S block, so I'll have 5S2. I am entering into the D block, and when I go into the D block, the energy level drops by one. So instead of a five, I need to put a four D, and then I'm going to count over to silver. You'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine elements gets me to silver which indicates that there are nine electrons in the 4D sublevel for silver. And then one last example that I want to include, what if you're writing the electron configuration for a noble gas? So I'm going to write the one for argon. I'm going to be writing the electron configuration for argon. If I'm using the shortcut method, do I have to go up to the previous noble gas? The answer is yes. And the reason for that is that this electron configuration is going to show you the electrons that are in the outermost energy level for, the, for that particular element. And those are the most important ones. We're going to see later that those are the ones that are participating in bonding. So those are the electrons that really matter in terms of the chemistry of the element. So it is important that you list those last electrons. So what I'm going to do for argon is I'm going to go up and all the way to the right. My last noble gas is going to be neon. And then I'm going to start after neon. Neon's number 10, so I come here to number 11. That's the 3S sublevel. It has two electrons. Come across here. Now I'm into the 3P. Fill up that P sublevel with six electrons and you're done. So even though it seems a little redundant when you're writing the electron configuration for a noble gas to go up to the previous noble gas, the reason for that is that these are the electrons that are going to participate in bonding. So you want to show those in your electron configuration. Stick around for our last video for Unit 2, which covers orbital notation.